two men journey to the bars and restaurants of Scandinavia to find amazing beers, always with the same question. Hey, what's on tap? It's time to find out. Okay, what's on tap podcast? Back again, once again with Martin. I am back. <clears throat> Martin. Woo. <clears throat> okay. Um, so, beers? this is your, yep, this is your... 15th episode on the show something or something like, like that, that. Some, somewhere around that range I lose count because I, I, I love being here you're, you're just the new regular so uh, soon you'll replace uh, that other guy we have on no here one can replace Matthias oh oh yeah that's his name Matthias yeah no, no one, one can Matthias. replace no one can replace Matthias Matthias is a national treasure yes um, international man of mystery he is uh, but t- today we are doing a head to head a uh, vintage challenge of Double Black Mash, which is an Amager annual release. Um, considered one of their, I think, prestige highest beers uh, on the market. It goes I think so. very quickly when it comes out. I have to be honest with you, I've never tried it. I have, I've bought two vintages of it and I've just been sitting on them. Oh, you've never had it? I've never had it before. Wow, I, I don't I... know what I'm getting into other than it is... Um, a yeah, twelve percent um ABV beer. It is an imperial stout. So, to Ooh. all the listeners, just before we started recording this, we talked a little bit about this beer, and I had to look up my history with it. I I, I seem to have tried the two thousand thirteen and fourteen editions, and then no no vintages after that. Uh, so trying the 16 and 17, is that right? Yeah. That'll be, that'll be a treat. Yep. And the 18 should be out pretty much any day now. I mean, oh, nice. yeah, it, it comes out really early in the year. It says double black mash, take a good thing and make it even better. That's a philosophy behind double black mash. This huge Imperial stout was easily big and potent enough after the first mashing, but we thought, what the heck, let's give it another spin. So we mashed it a second time, doubling everything that was already good while aiming it for great. All grain, heavy duty, no nonsense. Did we hit what we aimed at? Well, that's really up to you to decide. If you like it big and black, this is your kind of beer for sure. Oh, yeah. And I will say this is a very thick. The color is amazing. Yeah. You know, anything double is better. <clears throat> double IPA, oh, sure. double... Uh, Black Mash, Double Jeopardy, Double Dragon. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know about Double Dragon. What? <laughs> Double Dragon was a classic, man. Oh, true. Who can forget the amazing uh, movie based on it? Oh, yikes. I, I don't, I, I've repressed that from my memory. We've all tried to repress it from our memory. All right. So I get a bit of a smoky notes off of the, uh, off of the smell coming off both of them. It's very similar. 17 for sure. I think they both smell no. virtually the same. No. no? Uh, 16 doesn't smell smoky to me. I think they must smell very smoky. A little bit of licorice maybe? Could be. Could be. I do think they smell differently. 17 smells more like sausage and 16 doesn't. Okay. Well, let's, let's try 16. 16. Yeah. Cheers. Mm. <laughs> that is really good. That is really sweet. Um, Very sweet. Super rich. Full oily. Sticks in the mouth. So smooth though. It just goes down. Yeah. Oh yeah. Super, super easy. Oily isn't necessarily bad for me when no. I say oily. No, I think actually it's a, it can be quite a good thing when it comes yeah. to these kind of styles. While it's 12%, that is dangerous because that... Oh yeah. Mmm. <laughs> I like this. Uh, every time we do this podcast, there's always we always get into the moment where we're both swallowing beer mm-hmm. and tasting it, and it's just a series of man grunts. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. And I always imagine that that has to be the best part for the listeners. I'm Listen, sure they, they enjoy it to no end. Listening to <laughs> random grunts. Uh, yeah. It's like, are they having beer or sex? The answer is both. yes. Quite often both. <laughs> Um, this is super rich and um, just really pleasant to drink. 
It's not complex though. There's not. It's not giving me a lot other than this richness of mouthfeel and sweetness and um, just super super easy to drink. Yeah. Um, but I don't get like a lot of residual roastiness on it. I'm not getting any distinct uh, like chocolate or coffee notes or like I'm getting overly a lot roastedness. Of really? Yeah. Mm. Uh, no coffee. Uh, no roasted notes, yeah. but a lot of sweetness, a lot of chocolate, a lot of sweetness. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, this is this is what I want from from the way it's advertising itself. Yeah, this is what I would expect. Yeah, it's 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 really delicious. I'm, I'm not knocking it on, on any level whatsoever. Um, but let's turn to the 2017. Yes. You know, smell there it still smells less. Less uh, smoky, less like sausage now that I have my yeah. mouth coated with the 2016. Yeah, it's, it, I mean, that's what's interesting is this, it doesn't, like a lot of stouts, especially Imperial stouts, are just huge like flavor bombs just coming off the nose with just tons of like vanilla and coffee and chocolate and chilies and whatever else they put in these things. Yeah. But this is... So not that. It's like the opposite of all of those things. Yeah, especially um, the aroma, which is yeah. super discreet. Yeah, it's very, very subtle. All right. Cheers. Mm. 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 There is a difference. The, the 17 is a little bit more... Alcohol... It's a little, vapors. It's a little bit harsher. Yeah, yeah. Um, the carbonation is a little bit richer. It's a little bit more fizzy. Yeah. Um, and there's that. Sometimes you get a little bit of like a, a how would you call it? Like a soury tartness to the stouts. Isn't that just the extreme roast to the flavors? Could be, it could be. And I always interpret it as a soury roastiness yeah. kind yeah. of. Um, I get that off of the 2017 edition, where I don't get it at all off of the 2016. So I find the 2016 to be a much more rounded, less edgier version of, of this, the 2017. Yep. Um, they're both, I think, equally sweet. Um, yeah, they're both really, really sweet, which is not a bad thing. So there's a thing with coffee. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm trying to translate it well. Uh, coffee, which either stays in the pot too long mm -hmm. or is just really roasted, gets in Swedish, it's called garvsyra. Mm -hmm. And I, I actually, I have to admit, I looked it up. Tannic acid. Right. So tannic acid, garvsyra, is the thing that I, when you say there's a s slight tartness, a slight mm -hmm. acidity, that's the flavor I am connecting it to. Mm -hmm. uh, this is especially if you leave a pot of coffee just uh, on this heat, on, the, burner heat, too on, the, on yeah. the heated pad for like an hour. Mm -hmm. All of these tannic acid mm -hmm. flavors come out. But I'm not getting that much of it in this beer. No, it, 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 it's, it's really it's really modest. I would say it's just I'm, I think I am. Overly perceptive to it, where mm -hmm. I can get it out of a lot of stouts. I can quite easily hit that, like, oh, this has got that, like, that roasty sourness to it that I'm not really crazy about. But it, I find it in a lot of stouts. I get that just a just a, a, a smidge of that in this. It's not detracting from it for me, like I get quite often. Um, but I think for me, it is there in a noticeable amount. I only get it when I'm actively trying to search for it in the flavor. Yeah. But now going back and forth between them. Mm -hmm. There is a bit. There is a difference. Oh, for sure. There's a total difference. Um, um, I'm liking the the 2016, the early one, more mm -hmm. now with its super smooth. Yeah, yeah. This Mouth is just like finish. silky, yeah, yeah, yeah. pleasant, a little maybe on the heavy on the sweet side. If it was just a smidge roastier and a little less sweet, it'd probably be a five for me. 
Yeah. Because it's just really hitting all of these beautiful notes. I think it's 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 quite an extraordinary beer. Um, there's a lot of just smooth richness to it. It's it's kind of like when you sip a cognac or something and you just luxuriate in the yeah in the process of drinking it. For me, this is like the 2016 and just just you just want to sip it and sit back and like take enjoy your time the, and enjoy the process of drinking it. Yeah, looking at the fireplace <laughs> yeah. and there's a Labrador lying at your feet and you have an hour before you need to get fancy dressed for dinner. Exactly. Um, whereas the 2017 is... It actually has more flavor. It does have more flavor, but I think that's not a plus. No, it, it, it goes <laughs> in many different directions. Yeah. Mm. It's still very good, but there's still a bit of a raw character to it. Mm -hmm. A bit of a raw edge that needs to refine off. Um, and I... I, I Still think it's it's a, a really really good beer, but um, I think because of that <clears throat> harsher edge, it just is not working for me in the same way. And it's quite amazing that just a year different. And this is <clears throat> so this is the twenty sixteen is almost two years old at this point, and the twenty seventeen is about a year old at this point, yeah. and. You can definitely feel the difference in the aging. So I'd be curious to try the 2018 to yeah, see how aggressive that is in, in its notes. Because this feels like one of those stouts It's just going to get better with age. And uh, they've got a 2022 Best Buy date on this. So Yeah, on the, on the 2016, it's a 2021. So they put five years, which yeah. I think is way too conservative. Yeah, I mean, I think you could do... 10. I was thinking seven or eight years. I have a hard time with 10 years on a stout. I don't think stouts should be aged that long. They they don't have enough residual sugars or anything to kind of give maybe more not. from. Um, so I, maybe five years is about the shelf life. Seven, I don't know, could be... Uh, Maybe I'm gonna with the 2017. I'm gonna try an analogy mm -hmm. with the with this uh, slightly raw uh, flavor. Mm -hmm. It's like the the family father who still hasn't sold his motorbike. He's a little bit dangerous, but he's not supposed to be. Yeah, I can see that. It's like it's there. He's never gonna ride it again. But you know, yeah, he feels it, like he needs to have it. He doesn't want to get rid of the Harley. Yeah, it it hasn't been taken out of the garage for a year. But but it's like there, yeah. vroom, vroom. he starts it in the garage. You get this slightly uh, smoky flavor mm -hmm. from the exhausts, but no, it's not supposed to be there. It's supposed to be like the 2016. All right. So what uh, what do you get 2016? 4.75. I I absolutely love it. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I was thinking 4.75. It is just hitting all the right notes. It's perfectly balanced. Uh, I think this is a really um, uh, outstanding vintage and uh, in beer. Uh, 2017? 4.5. Um, you're much kinder than I. I was actually going to give it a 4. Oh, wow. I, think, I, I, I literally think there is a night and day difference between these two beers. And I by far prefer the... The roundness and the smoothness, silkiness of the 2016, where I think the 2017 has got this harsher edge to it that keeps me from really, like, because I see how good the 2016 is, how much yeah. you can look jury in it. 2017 is so far from that that I just don't enjoy it as much. It's still an excellent beer, really, really good. Not trying to to knock it in any way whatsoever. But, but the, this is interesting because here I think we're going into personal preference mm -hmm. where we both love super silky smooth, nice, uh, friendly, thick imperial stouts. Mm -hmm. But I I think I like the abrasive stouts more than you do. Oh, by far. Uh, I, yeah. tend to, I tend to actually sometimes gravitate towards stouts that will punch me in the mouth with abrasive, aggressive... Flavors that go in all directions. As long as they're not off flavors or bad, like yeah. um, uh, infectious flavors, mm -hmm. 
uh, I tend to go there where the wood is super apparent or the bourbon barrel aged is just mm-hmm. off the off the charts. Uh, so I think that's the reason why we, we we differ so very much in that one, but have the identical rating on the 2016. Yeah, very, very well could be. Um, yeah, I definitely think this is a couple of notches down from. I mean, 45. I could give it that. You know. But no, 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 it is, it's don't, not. Don't it's change not your rating. The same, to, it's not in the same ballpark as 2016. I think. The, uh, I think they're good in different aspects. The sad thing is, I think you. We've now drank all of your double black mash. Yeah, there's no two I have. Because I would have loved to try the 2017 in a year. Oh, me too. That would have been great. Yeah. Um, but the 20, these sell out really, really fast yeah, know, when they come on the market. I know. Um, so I. I found I think I found the 2016 in some off sh- bodega in in um in Copenhagen off of Niehaven. Wow. And the 2017 I think I'm pretty sure I got from uh kiosk. Okay. Um or maybe I got it from a mocker itself. I can't remember. It's been many beers ago. Yeah. So the but, uh, timeline is hazy. <laughs> I'm out is such a great brewery. They've yeah. they kind of always been there uh, churning out stuff. I recently treated some uh, some beer friends to a old uh, Amalga beer I'd just been saving. Mm-hmm. I, I can't for the life of me remember which it was. No, that doesn't matter. That actually doesn't matter. So Amalga went through like a silver age and then a golden age. And then now they're either in a second silver age or a second golden age, depending on who you ask. Mm-hmm. Uh, where they've they've fluctuated across the years, but they've never fluctuated to a bad state. They've always been in. Uh, yeah, they've high. always been they've always been good, but sometimes they go from good to great. Yes, and then back to good again. Th- that's exactly like, what I mean. Like I tried the Lend of the Axe Grinder when it was still classified as a, a double IPA, yeah. and then it got reclassified as a barley wine, yeah. <laughs> which was and I actually kept it for a couple of years. It was really good. I really enjoyed that beer. Yeah. Um, I thought it was really, really nice. Um, and overall, I enjoy Amager's offerings. I always look forward to what they're doing, but they're never like a must have. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know I'm, what I'm going to get from, I'm going to enjoy. And I'm always going to enjoy the story that they have with their beer because those are amazing. Yeah. But Amager isn't one of those breweries that I just rush towards. And I think. That's the reason for that is when I first started getting really into craft beer, a mager was a, was around a lot in in Sweden, and most of their stuff was not particularly good at that time. Yeah, that's like a silver age or yeah, yeah. Um, and so but, I had a really hard time getting into their stuff, and I went to a few tap takeovers here in, in Malmo, and I tried their and I was just like, Ugh, I don't know. But then something happened about two years ago, and they've really just started. Making really, really good beers. Yeah, would you have to consider that we, we, you and I, we go for the specialty beers because mm-hmm. I think they're still making their uh, standard IPA mm-hmm. in Sweden. It's called modern IPA. Mm-hmm. It's called something else in uh, in Denmark. It's like a, a hipster on the label. I think they're still making that. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had their Seven Sins, where several of them were super fun, but they had Sloth, which was like a pilsner or a pale ale. And it was quite boring. Mm-hmm. And it's very possible that they still ma- make those beers, but you and I are never look- searching no, them you, out. You can buy the Seven Sin series. You can buy a yeah. So that, that means there's that. That, that means they're still making some beers that are boring, mm-hmm. and they're still making those. But they want to appeal to a broader market. But we've already passed those beers. We're now looking for the newest, craziest thing. So now that but they do, they- but they do a lot of like their when they do their. Um, Americana Day, which is uh, those are all crazy beers. Which is the yeah July Fourth. They're yeah. always collabs with other breweries, and a few of those have generated um, some year-round beers, mm-hmm. like the uh, Stig um, Baget or something like that. Stig Baget is a uh, yeah, Stig yeah. No, no, Stig Baget is uh, yeah, I got it. But there's something called Stig is something that's a collab beer they came out with. It's got the woman, the mom looking character holding the the roll of uh, the tray of bread rolls. Oh, uh, Sigtebrød. 
Seek the Brood. That's yeah. with Trillium. Okay, yeah. So they, they produce that. They've done that a couple times now. Yeah. Um, See, I'm good at picking up uh, visual clues. There you go. I figured I figured, uh, you, I figured but, you would know what that one was. But that's a Danish thing. Seek the Brood is a kind of bread mm-hmm. that doesn't exist in Sweden. Okay, if you say so. Uh, some kind of special flour, whatever. Uh, so yeah, it, you're right. That, that one keeps popping up. Um, but I never go for it. But, but when you say you don't necessarily um, seek out new Amaga beers, mm-hmm. I always do. Whenever I see no, a, I, an Amaga beer I have never tried, well, I not, immediately buy it. I'm not saying I seek it out, but I don't do the... I'm not the online shopper that you are. Like, I've, I've been to the brewery a few times, yeah. and I try to go by there uh, when I can, but I don't... And if I go to, like, kiosk or... Um, uh, McKellar and friends. If they have something, I'll, I'll pick it up. But I don't. Out of my way, I don't do like out of my way to to buy it. Okay, uh, because I always fall in the trap where there are some uh, Danish web shops mm-hmm. that put up the the Amago, uh, American releases mm-hmm. as like a pre-release. You can mm-hmm. buy it on their web shop, but they don't ship it until like three weeks later. Yeah, and the trap I always fall into is that I I buy them. And a lot of other beers mm-hmm. to, to, to fill up a box that they ship. But then the entire box gets held up until the, the pre-release date. Mm. So I three weeks later, I go around wondering, where did I put that beer from the Molen? I know I bought it. There's no <laughs> way uh, that it shouldn't have arrived. And it's still held up to, uh, together with the Amago beers. Yeah. So that's that's a, a signal that I do always go for the Amago beers as early as possible, even to my own detriment. Yeah. Well, that's good. It, it's, a, it's a good sign to them. And I actually know that Amago... There's uh, several da- Danish beer organizations. Mm-hmm. And one of them rates the best brewery in Denmark for that year. Mm-hmm. And Amago is now number one for the first time in... I don't know how many years, but it's several years. Well, Mager gets it's it's rated one of the highest breweries in Denmark, and for good reason because yes. it is they do really really good stuff, and you can find a few Mager beers in the U.S. pretty easily as well. Um, they did a, a collab with I want to say Prairie Artisan. Oh wow! That you yeah, can yeah, find yeah. you can find in the U.S. Um, quite easily. Something Tornado. Yes. Yeah. Well, all right. Let's wrap yeah. this up. Uh, you can find us online at whatsontappodcast.com. Um, Instagram, Facebook, Spotify, YouTube, iTunes, and wherever you can find fine podcasts online. So until next time, keep drinking, you dum-dums. Oh, <laughs> uh, you stole it from me. I did. <laughs> oh.